is Wednesday. It's your favorite podcaster's podcast. Damn. That new Moray playing. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Today we vibing today, man. Turn this up. Shout out to all the big boys. <laughs> all the big boys. Hey, turn me up in my mic a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Chad. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect right there. I want to hear myself like the people hear me. Because I <laughs> like the way I sound when I do this. What's up, family? It's your boy Elders. You're tuning to the Just Elders podcast, the greatest podcast to ever hit the airways. I'm super excited. I'm about to record the greatest episode I have ever recorded. I say that every time, and I mean it every single time. I want to thank each and every last person that tuned in to last week's episode. I'm on the team for black people. Shout out Attorney Mowley Davis. Shout out to Cree. Super dope episode. We had a lot of fun with it. Got a lot of raving reviews. Specifically on Fanbase. <clears throat> go follow me on Fanbase right now. Everybody go follow me on Fanbase. It is a new social media platform. It is a combination of Instagram, Clubhouse, all in one. But what's the big difference? You get paid. We are monetizing our content. <clears throat> and y'all know content creators know. People make you YouTube. You can't monetize until you get 10,000 hours or 1,000 subscribers. Instagram, you can't monetize until we notice you. Uh, Clubhouse. You know what I'm saying? Nobody lets you monetize right now. They let you monetize? They let you monetize. Damn. I made $150 this week. $150. So uh, check me out. Follow me on there. We do, uh, like, we're doing these listening parties where people just sitting back listening to the Just Elder podcast, vibing. So, um, I do my new day is every Sunday. Every Sunday, I'm gonna do a listening party, play a different episode. We played, uh, we played two. We did, uh, I'm on the team for black people, and then we also did, uh, that's right, I like my girl BBW. She said, I'm obsessed with thick women, and I agree. Hey. That's right, I like my girls, BBW. Had BBW appreciate, uh, pre appreciation day on fan base, and and look, guess what? No pun intended. We broke the app. Hey. <laughs> room, room was too heavy. <laughs> room was too heavy. Literally, they shut down the room like two or three times because we had too many people on there. So people vibing with it. A whole bunch of new subscribers. Shout out to all our new subscribers. Uh, shout out to all our new uh, members in the community. We're excited. But let's jump into this episode. Keep you ready. Get it. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on a podcast, I am super excited to have this young lady with me. I met her in 2000, what, what was that election year? 2016, when Atlanta had 19 people running for mayor. <laughs> and your value in the political world was on what candidate you got behind. And were, there a leg were they a legitimate candidate? candidate? Yeah, that was the value. So, uh, so I remember going to. It was so many fucking. There was a forum every other day. <laughs> yeah, and I kept seeing this young lady in the back. So find out she you saying his name on here. You want to say his name? Yeah, you cool, you cool with that? All right, cool. So she was rolling with Peter Amon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out P Peter Amon, former COO of Atlanta. Uh, Peter was like, people kind of vibing with him. He was a. He was down. Yeah, he was. He was down. People kind of listened to his message. Of course, y'all know I'm rolling with Senator Fort. Y'all know how they go. Sen Senator Fort and all the Bernie bros. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, we like Fort. We like Fort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we fought with him. And the infamous LeBron King. Oh, man. You know, he's like, he moved to another state, and he's like a musician now. He's like changed, yeah. He's His whole life. Different. We're going to talk about LeBron, too, on the podcast. But long story short, met this young lady in the back, and we just got to talking, man. And we just all the time on the phone talking strategy, talking politics. So this like when it comes to my age, like it's my favorite person to talk to, politic wise. Uh, she's known in Atlanta as a fierce hired sword. If she's on your team, you're gonna make some noise. Uh, so we're super excited to get her takes on what's happening. 
Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time to the Just Elder podcast, please make a well warm welcome to Saba Long. <laughs> How you doing, Saba? Great. Can before we get started, can we uh kind of flex a little bit, man? Like, just I mean, you got a you got a pretty nice career. Yeah, I've been blessed. It's been a bit random. Um, I mean, I thought, you know, at eighteen, you don't know what the heck you're gonna do, right? So I thought I was gonna go into uh, the music industry and do A and R for real. For real, Dang. I know. So like, way you're way then. off. Yeah, way, I'm way <laughs> off. Well, See, we, after this, we had a song. We gonna play you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so but actually, what I do now is not totally that different. If you think about candidates and developing candidates, it's so, kind of similar to developing artists. This is true. So I love right. po- I love political people. They. They tie it all. They always tie it. Yeah. I like that. Talk about the genesis, man. Like, 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 what made you make that transition to politics? So then, at the same time, I was in college and I was working on a documentary about urban renewal in Atlanta. We were just a little ahead of the ahead of the curve, ahead of our time. Mm. Um, and we were like, this was down when Edgewood Avenue was not Edgewood not Avenue. Not Edgewood <laughs> Avenue we know today. Like it was still a pretty sketch. Right, like you could never, you just never knew what was gonna come. When Edgewood looked like the other side of Freedom Parkway. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. So at that time, we were interviewing all the mayoral candidates, right? So Kwanzaa, Kasim, Caesar, Mary Norwood, all of those folks, right? Mm-hmm. And at that time, Caesar was actually still planning to run for mayor. He had not made that switch over to council switch president. To council president. Okay. Yeah, and um, a friend, a, a guy that I knew uh, who went to Howard with Kasim told me hey, Kasim's going to be the next mayor of Atlanta. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm actually interviewing him for this documentary. Um, and I ended up working with Caesar, which I think was like a point of friction with me and Kasim to this day. <laughs> but it's yes. all good. Yes. And so uh, from there, I, ju- I just, the bug got me. And it was and you've been hard in the game. to shake it. Yeah. <sighs> Even when I've kind of stepped away, I've still had, a little bit of a toe or, you know, a half a toe still in the political world. So today, the conversation I want to have, I brought her on because I feel like there's a population of voters who are voting, but they're not necessarily engaged all the way on the voter level. You know, our generation, millennial, uh, definitely Y or Z, whichever, whatever one you call them, they don't really know what's happening. So I want us to have a conversation that can bring you all the way down to earth can we do that yeah cool uh let's start at the top president biden is here we voted for him we went hard for him he would not be elected if not for black people okay and if not for jim clyburn okay so now what should people be because i haven't heard nothing from biden you know what i'm saying he was just here I mean, he did the hundred, the hundred thing. So I'm, I'm just telling you what you. I'm, t- I'm speaking. To, I'm not speaking as elders. I'm speaking from the streets. I got you. What the streets are saying. Yeah. Biden, like they were everywhere. It now was commercial. Were, were the streets at that rally? No. Huh? What, were the streets at? Exactly. Last Bi- week. Bi- yeah, Biden had a rally last week. T- tell us about it. Enlighten the people. Yeah. Yeah. So he basically has kind of done a, a thank you tour, right, in Georgia. He's been to Georgia, I think, twice in his presidency, so twice in 100 days, which is a lot yeah. if you think about, you know, all the other places he could be as president. Right. So he had, you know, he had uh, the two senators, right, which, again, black people helped elect. Right. If not for black Georgia voters, we would not have control. Of, Democrat Democrats would not have control of the Senate. So he had Warnock there. He had Ossoff there. You know, all the all the representatives, and it was just basically a thank you, Georgia. We could not have made it to 100 days without you, you know, and just an appreciation and kind of setting the ground for the next election, right? Mm. So you've got mayoral election in 21. Right. You've got gubernatorial election in 22. Two. And you have the Senate, Senate in, 22. in 22. Cool. So should we be happy with his performance right now? Yeah, he, so I he, think he came and said thank you, like we got something from it, or, or were we supposed to? Yeah, like in a hundred years, in a hundred streets weren't at the rally. So like, were we supposed to be at the rally? Like, give us. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, the rally is kind of like a fundraiser. The folks who are in the know are the folks who were gonna be there. Right. Okay. Right. They don't tell you where. It's By the way, I, can, I I knew. I just want to let you know. <laughs> Eldridge is <laughs> in the know. I just want to let y'all know. Like, <laughs> I knew. We'll be at the next one. We'll be at the next. There one. you go. There you go. 
so, enlighten the people next time. Just invite them all to the rally with you. Question. In 100 days, what should we have expected from Biden? From your standpoint, what you feel like? What should, but what should we have expected or what did you expect sure. and what did we get? I think to Biden's benefit, the bar was so low because of Trump. Mm. Right? So it he didn't have to accomplish a lot necessarily because ultimately – People just wanted stability. Yeah, they just wanted right. to see something different. Right. And so, I mean, if you look at what he accomplished, he got two things that he said, two things that he focused on, which was shots in arms, right? So he said he wanted 100 million shots. I think right now they're at almost 300 million shots. Damn. I tripled his goal, right? And then the so other thing. I don't need it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Herd immunity. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bouchy said. <laughs> All right, come on. Get he's a part of he's a, he's a part of the fifteen percent, man. Fifteen percent. All right. <laughs> and then the other thing that he said was that um, they were going to pass a stimulus bill, mm-hmm. right? And so that was like almost two trillion dollars, one point eight trillion, something like that. Yeah, you got your checks. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> what else? I mean, those were two key things. So now I think what he's trying to figure out is the next big thing, right? So he's talked about two big spending packages that Republicans are, you know, up in arms about because Biden is spending at a rate that, I mean, we thought Obama spent a lot when he did the $800 million or $800 billion package in right. 08, 09. We're already at, we're already at $2 trillion, right? But that, is that the the one that Obama did though? He didn't give checks to people. Though. No, so, no, so, that was so Biden gave checks to people. Right, and, exactly. Okay. And and Trump did too. He did in the last month or so. Yeah, that Trump check, that Trump stimmy. And, 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 and you know, Trump, his signature was on it, so you know that one came from Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and he held it up. Hey, hey, I need right. to get that on there. Right, you're not getting this check <laughs> until my name is on it. Hey. Branding. Oh, let me see that. Let me see that before you before you turn that in. I'm a see. I'm a brand guy, <laughs> so I, I, I can't I can't blame him. On that one. That's why we haven't got our just elder checks, y'all. <sighs> so putting no uh, signatures on it. So, um, what about uh, specifically? Because you said it. There's other people that said it. Black people got him in, like. What is something we're going to see? What are we going to get? Yeah, what are we really going to get? Let's us, uni- not universal, because everybody got a STEMI check. Yeah. Everybody's vaccine, health care for every, like, what is black people going to get? Because there are, you know, on the Breakfast Club, they said he don't sign executive, uh, executive orders. Yeah, executive orders for uh, Asian people, executive orders for LGBTQ people. Like, what are we going to get for black people? Like, what should we expect from? What should we expect anything? Come on, Biden. Come on. Just bless me, Biden. Just bless me. Just bless me. That shit is so funny. So, yeah, what you think? What's your thoughts? Uh, that's a tough one, right? So, I mean, there's the question of, does, is Biden the one that's going to get us a, a real conversation on re- around reparations? Possibly, I don't know. I I think that is, you know. Yeah, I mean, he said he there. wasn't with it. Like, yeah, I, I mean, it's possible. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but the likelihood is slim, right? So I think what you're gonna get is like things. His, you know, his uh, legislative agenda as it relates to um, his economic plan. So he's put together an almost two trillion dollar family's economic plan Mm -hmm. and so and granted it is technically universal right so it will impact everyone right but in particular those policies are going to help african americans right because if you're going from you know an african-american family goes from uh, having a two thousand dollar tax credit to now having a six thousand dollar tax credit 
And then the other part of that is it encourages keeping the family together, right? This tax credit. Right. So like that could be seen as a way that is helping black people. His cabinet is the most diverse cabinet we've ever had. Okay. Fifty eight percent or so of his nominees have been women. Right? Fifteen percent of them have been Hispanic. So if you think if you compare him to Obama, certainly him to Trump, like there has been some advancement. He's he definitely moving forward. So like and nah, like so what, what black people gonna get? So she just said nothing. It was yeah. just it was just uh, fancy way. Say, <laughs> it was a fancy just, way. Just, just elders <laughs> people. I mean, well, there's a part of his economic plan is uh, around HBCUs, right? So there's there will be something there for HBCUs. Uh, all black people don't go to college. That's true. I mean, because what I'm saying is, I thought we couldn't get nothing specific, but like, I've seen a specific. This is for the Asians because there's a hate crime going on, right. which is fine. Yeah. Why can't we get? Hey, police are killing black people. There is a bill to stop these yeah. hate crimes. It's just right? an well, executive order. There is a bill on the, at the federal level around that. Is is it in force? Like how? no, I mean oh. it's it's it, it hasn't been passed. There you go. Right. There you go. Yeah. Right. And that and like we just want like what I'm saying is if we put him in office, can we get something tangible so, so that's what's not the that's black not agenda? What would across you say? the board? Well, for for me, like my the most important thing for me would be that George Floyd Act going through right. and getting passed. Like that's yeah. and to find out this Democrats holding it up, like in the Senate, that doesn't make me feel comfortable about yeah. Democrats that we that you told us to vote y'all in because right. y'all would have a majority. And y'all are fighting with, you know, against right. each other. So that part of it, you know what I'm saying? Got Can it. we get something? Or, I mean, an executive order that is just for us that, I mean, you can cut a check. We can talk reparations. Like we can have that conversation flat out. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm definitely two, for. Two year, uh, two years of free community college is another thing that's in this in this plan that they're putting together. Well, I w- and I would take that if we can also include trade schools into that to make yes, sure that people. Yes, there actually is a component That's specifically cool. around workforce development. But then I also feel like, it, but it has to be direct though, because like what I've seen, because Elder like to shout them out. I don't shout out, but we we work for organizations that we see. There's like a bottleneck, right? They'll say, "Hey, we have a hundred million dollars for this initiative." It gets passed. Boom. Once it but gets down to the state, to the exactly. How do we get it to the yeah. people? Like. And right. it might not be a Biden problem, but at first I want him to cut some checks. There, but there might here. be, I mean, there could be a, an area where the federal government might have more regulations than they need on some on something like that, right? And if they cut the red tape and make it easier to distribute the funds so it goes directly to the people who need it. I mean, that's certainly, you know, I would hope that's part of the conversation. So you said something about, you asked what what is our agenda. Speaking of agendas. What do you feel about the Our Black Party group? Enlighten Diddy's me. Our Black Party, huh? Oh, Diddy. Yeah. Enlighten me. So the Our Black Party was started, when was that? This was last year during the election. Is this last year. And no, no, no. So this, this is two. This it's, a it's a different one. Okay. So it's for a vote. So there was a group of people that were like, hold your vote. Don't vote until you got something. You know, that whole population. So Diddy, he put together Our Black Party. Th- this is when it was right before the election when him and Charlemagne had to sit down and Diddy was like, okay, look, we didn't put anything on the table right. up front. So we'll vote for Biden, get Trump out, but we want something going forward. And that's when our black party came Got about. It. So that's the timeline of that. Yeah. So our black party, um, some of the things they say are on our, on the black, uh, the power and the black agenda. Well, hold on. Before I even go into that, I'm beefing with our black party. Because when I first heard about it, I'm like, oh, okay, this could be good. Like, it could be empowering. Like, they got the resources to really get behind because they were talking real grassroots and all that stuff. Man, so they were like, we're electing Georgia. uh, Like, they're electing representatives all over, like organizers. So I don't, I've been emailing all the leaders from the beginning. Like, I don't email them like five, six, seven times. Like, yo, want to be a part of it they're like okay we're gonna let Even you know other people been emailing and telling like hey Elder, I, i'll put your name down for it man who's our representative <laughs> and i'm about to see if you know him <laughs> because if you don't know him i'm gonna have a real problem 
I sent it to y'all on Instagram. Let me see. Uh, where is this thing at? I was so mad. I'm like, this dude don't even. But let me ask we're not you even, this. Why we're not even looking, IG friends. Why are you looking for that? Do you think that we should have a black party? De- we definitely should. No, I don't know. Don't know. Mm-mm. I never seen him. In my, I've n- I haven't seen him in the political world. I haven't seen him in the uh, organizing world. Hold on, Saba so say you don't you don't know him. That one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. He so probably, he probably don't even live down here. He probably live in New York. Bruh. Oh dang. Like he lives here in Georgia, and I try. He might be good people. I don't know. I tried to call him. He didn't pick up the phone. <laughs> he tried IG call him. Look, niggas <laughs> don't pick up IG. Look, turn up my phone. I just, bruh, he been, he been pit since. Please leave your message. Hold on, let me see, I'm leaving a message. Turn it up. Hey, how you doing? This is Eldridge with the Jess Eldridge Podcast. I just want to call and congratulate you for being the new state director for our black party. Um, Super excited about it. We've been uh, waiting to hear more information about what our black party is doing for the community, specifically here in Georgia. Whenever you get this message, man, please call me back, 770-480-6923. I would love to just have a conversation with you, see how we can get involved. And um, I'm going to just be real, too. Like, they picked you over me, so I just want to know why. (laughs) So whenever you get this message, call me back, and I would love to build with you. Bye bye. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, I was in my feeling, bro. Like, I'm like, dog. So to your point, do I think we need a black party? Yes, I do. I think we need a party that is organized, that has the ability to raise money. You know what I'm saying? That can leverage, use its influence as leverage to get us what we want. Right. Because we're not going to get it from the, uh, the Democratic Party. That's fair. Do we need a black party or do we need to educate black people on party politics? Because, like, what I saw was, like, people got involved with politics with Obama. Like, oh, yeah, we're going right. to canvas this stuff. But they didn't really know, so we lost midterms, right? Then Trump came because people thought they knew politics. And they're like, oh, well, business, man, can run America. But then we got more serious. But I don't think, especially us as the general black people, especially in the streets, we don't understand party politics. We don't understand, like, we could we could all rush the Republican Party if we want to strategically and make them bend to our will. And if, all the, if there's that many racists in there, they'll leave the party and go somewhere. Like, there are party policies we could play. So, I mean, our black party would be cool, but I don't even think everybody knows how to play these party games like these you know what i'm saying political games I mean, the like, public never understands their power mm, and mm. that's the key speak to it, speak and to how it. do you yeah like why <laughs> a lack a lack of education i think is one a lack of interest right or just kind of like resigned oh it's always going to be like this so it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter if i vote if i participate like you fundamentally have the power to change who's in office at every level of government. So what about the people that say it's already planned, they already know who they're going to elect anyway? Mm. What do you say to them? Because a lot, and again, we're talking, having a conversation from the millennial generation YZ conversation. Like, this is what they're saying, this is what they're thinking. I mean, Obama's a prime example. Obama was never supposed to have been president, right? Hillary Clinton. he has blood from George Washington. What what they say on YouTube? He has, he's a, Thirteenth descendant, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. Like they, it, Illuminati already picked him. Yeah, they, they say Illuminati picked Obama. Man, if you're if you're listening to the Illuminati <laughs> stuff, I can't help you. you, can't, you can't. It doesn't matter. Uh, y'all, so we can't that's help like, you all that. Either. That's like the same thing as the QAnon people. Like it doesn't matter what you say, they're going to have their own point of view and and not. So, it. 
So as far as like educating, like if somebody need to really just get educated in this process, because one thing I will say, being on the campaigns, Very I will. Enlightening. It is. I learned a lot of stuff just being on them campaigns. But one thing I see is the interns. I look at black interns versus the white interns. And maybe this problem is just on a campaign I was on. But I know Fort had them Bernie bros. Like he had these Hard. like hardcore progressive. We eat, sleep, drink politics. Yep. And then I seen Caesar. We making twenty dollars an hour, so <laughs> we over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you correct me if I'm wrong. Right. I'm, I'm just saying, like, what makes them like? What are they learning, or what are they teaching on, on our counterpart side to make them so interested in politics? Mm. That's what I kind of want to know. What What makes who more interested? Our counterpart, like to me, it seems like younger white kids or or young millennials are more interested in politics right. than black millennials. And I could just make a general statement. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but I think it depends on, like, what you learned growing up, like, in the household, like, what you learned in school, who your peers are, like, that all influences it. Right. Right? If it's if it's common, if you think about, like, kids who went to Obama rallies, right, or kids who even went to Trump rallies, mm-hmm. right, like, their point of view of politics is going to be very different from mm-hmm. the kid who was never exposed to that. That's good. I, mean, I definitely can see that. Cause like my parents didn't do Growing up, I did nothing you know, with politics. Nothing. My parents did nothing, and I know my kids. Hell, baby girl, we was out there with for Stacey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell, the son. Like, yeah. So her perspective is gonna be completely totally different. That's she crazy. That's crazy. Like, crazy. Like, I didn't even think about that. Cause like my parents did definitely did nothing. Not with us. As far as we didn't do no phone banking, we knock on no doors. Yeah, like, I was told not even to answer phone? the census, people. So. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that because what about the census? Like, do you know what's going on with that? I heard like some seats was lost, some seats yeah, was gained. Yeah, so and- I mean, the challenge of the census was that it freaking happened during a pandemic, right? So people weren't at home. So you got New York as a prime example. You had thousands of people leave the city, a lot of younger people, to like say, oh, you know what, instead of holing up in this 400 square foot apartment, I'm gonna go back to my parents' house in Texas. So, right? so for the people out there, what what is the census? Is that online? Is it coming off of your door? Yeah, so is it's it? it's done every ten years, and it's oh, every ten. Every ten. Damn, so that's a long it's, time. Yeah, so it's a yeah. count of that's the population. A big deal. That's why exactly. That's why it's such a big deal. It's a count of the U.S. population of everyone. It doesn't matter if you're undocumented, if you're a baby, if you're 85. Like every single living person in the United States, they want to document. Right. And so people are scared of me. <laughs> but here's the reason why. Right. I know it sounds like uh, is this big government, like all of my business trying to find well, out. I, I thought know. it was fake. I ain't gonna lie. A lady came out to my door and I was just like, I got beat it, old lady. I mean, she because she was so persistent with this. shit. I'm like, hey, look, I ain't trying to do this shit. For real, like, yeah. they but told me I could do it online. Why, yeah, you can do it online. I, so why are you here in person? She was like so, and I feel like that turned people off too, like, because I did mine online, but the door knocking, that, that's old. Like, I, that's yeah. antiquated. Yeah, and we got to update the technology if we Well, will. I mean. Uh, Cash App should have everybody documented in America, like. That's true. I know Cash Up got everybody. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Cash Up. They don't have every child. But <laughs> she got the kids. They might. For a child support, it'd be saying that. <laughs> For Tay Tay. For Tay Tay. But well, here's why it's important. So the government uses the census to determine how many representatives you're going to have, right? So how many state reps, how many uh, United States representatives, how many senators, or not many senators, because senators is always 100, but how many representatives you have, right? right? And it also determines how much federal government your state or your community will get. Right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I for just housing, for transportation. So it's all based on the number of people in that area, right? So if you have people who don't who don't participate in the census, that means that's less money coming into that state or to that community right. because they're not counted. And so what it means politically is, you know, in, in this, when they redid the census this time, New York lost, I believe, two seats. Um, so a number of 
blue states lost at least one seat. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah, and then some red or you know on the margin states gained. Right, so Texas I think gained two. Georgia surprisingly stayed the same, which I I would have thought we would have picked up at least one. Does the census go to state politics too? Like, will it tell you if you're now your it, district should get yeah, more? Yeah, well, it I mean it does sort of in the sense of redistricting, right? Okay. So redistricting is something that we will be doing in Georgia. I want to say it's going to start at the end, towards the end of this year, and so that redistricting determines who you're you know where the where the lines are drawn for your district seats right for right. So for state reps for uh for school board for city council all of that right Man, it's so much and it's all based it, on it, the population now i see why people just don't do they just tap like, out yeah, because like, like, i want to but then now when you explain it, it's like man it's so i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna live yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah because the other thing that's what a lot of it is does politics affect and i'm, I'm gonna ask you this too Elgin, because we're in this generation does politics affect you differently once you become a quote unquote homeowner or sure. you fi- you find your roots? Because like, how do you how are you involved in politics even on a local level if you're in an apartment and you're moving every year from yeah. this city to that city to that city? But just because you know apartment rates are cheaper, closer to your job, but you don't have you you don't have a house yet. Yeah, so then but how it's, do you, it's not just how it's do we not get just those? property taxes, right? It's What's the cost of my water bill? Right. It's does my street have sidewalks on it? Is there a train station? Yeah. Hell, I do, but like, politicians know, control but do your utility bills. But yeah. do the politicians? Well, the question is, do the politicians look at it that way? Do they focus more on the like? Will they focus on this area because these are a row of houses versus that area that has two apartments? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a, this is coming from a friend who is an elected official. Mm-hmm. She says, I have however many thousands of people in my district mm-hmm. but i have about 1500 to 2000 people that really decides for all of them those people decide for all of them y'all hear my niece in the background yeah, yeah, yeah. we pod and we which we we're child friendly around here you'll hear more kids to come <laughs> <laughs> we're family oriented in this block that's why i haven't been cussing so much today <laughs> um but uh like she said, it's about 2,500 of them that make the decision mm-hmm. for those other because those are the engaged constituents. Uh, con- uh, yeah. yeah. So that's what it is. So it's like if you're that person that's always checking in like, yo, I need this light change. Hey, yo, I need, you know what I'm saying? Like boom, yeah. boom, boom. If you're that person, you win. Yeah, I'm going to give you like a real example of this. Oh, let's go. So, a Cascade Nature Preserve, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a beautiful nature preserve in the heart of Cascade. Mm-hmm. And there's a group of retired black women, so they're all in their like 60s, 70s. They call themselves the Nature Girls, right? It's so adorable. <laughs> so like on the week like during the, you know, during the weekday, they don't have anything else to do. They're all retired. They go walk Cascade mm-hmm. Nature Preserve. Mm-hmm. One day they went out for a walk, and this is like a common area right this isn't like some sketchy part of town like 10 people's cars were broken into mm. in the middle of the day this is like 10 11 o'clock in the morning like on a weekday like what what's going on All right yeah. right so they talked to the council atl scoop <laughs> we'll talk about that later we'll talk, oh, about, that. We'll talk about that later keep going put, put a pin in. right so they talked to the council person who represents that district right and they talked to obviously uh, the police departments like like this is crazy what's going on it's the middle of the day so uh, maybe a couple weeks go by it happens again it's like are you freaking Dang. kidding me the middle of the day why are cars being broken into you go there now there's a camera so there's an apd camera that the so those women who are all kind of politically inclined they they reached out to that council member she worked with the police department and the police foundation they put a camera up so now apd can pull up that camera at any time and see if something sketchy is going on mm. so that's the, the power of local politics well, yeah it's, it's 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 like i remember when Fort was running for uh mayor, right there at um, man, I'm a uh, Stanton and uh Delo. Oh yeah, yeah, shout out, shout it, out, it, it's Stanton, Stanton <laughs> and Delo. The light was down. 
Mm-hmm. Literally, somebody hit the pole and the light is just hanging. Yeah. And that's almost like that for it wasn't no roach there, it wasn't no city there. And we were like, Fort was pissed. Fort was like, if this was Buckhead, it would have been right back up. It would have been up yesterday. Somebody would have rolled by, but let me fix this. <laughs> but again, on, you got to think about it. The residents in Buckhead would have been outraged. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The residents in Buckhead would have said something. Like, in our community, we're just so used to just accepting because we've been shitted on for so much in this country. Like, we're just like, well, they're going to fix it when they fix it. We don't it. ask for what we deserve. We yeah. don't. We don't. And it's so late. I mean, because to that point, like you just said, how are you going to ask if you don't know? If you're living in an apartment, you don't think you can ask. Or let's be real. You know, if you're out here on some shady shit, you don't want to be in the politician's face. You ain't trying to be down in City Hall and say, hey, but hey, sir, you smell a little funny. Could, no, no. Because tell your homegirl to ask. For there you go. There you go. Because I'm be real. There, there is backlash there, too. You do put it, yourself in the limelight. Like, right. they will look into you. Like, if you become, but start becoming a problem, like somebody that they see in all the time, they're going to find out who. And boom. Who, and that's the issue. Because if you work for me and I'm just asking you for what I want, how I become a. How how's it become an issue? You I'm, know what I'm saying? I'm just saying they're gonna look into you on some like who this who is this person? Yeah, I like, mean not like they're not the coming style. to get you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, if seen it. if there's if there's things that align, like if you have warrants, I don't think you should be going in the yeah, city hall, <laughs> like, protesting at the city council <laughs> member. Hey, look here, partner. Yeah, don't do it. Like I don't think you should do that. But hey, look, like, man, I'm trapping right here on the corner, man. I need some street light. <laughs> Dang, dang, like dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it goes. So, you know, like, like, cause here, and I, this is a statement I feel, and you c- correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like the Democrats have four years to really prove the black people. I don't know if they have four years. Yeah, it's going to be like a year I think and a half. it might be less than that. I agree with that. I'll even go with that. But I don't, what this let me let me finish my statement. They have less than four years <laughs> to really prove to black people that they are for us. Well, they're about to lose the next six at least presidential elections. Like, cause folks just not gonna come out, bro. You gotta realize they went too hard this last election. They went hard for the Senate. Like, come on, we've never seen a Senate race become this national the way. All saw from Warnock was Senate race ever. Historical. Once you make it to SNL, you know you're national, right, Bruh. So what I'm saying is, now if you don't if you don't show something now, what what's the vote for it? I vote for you. I don't get nothing. I don't vote for you. I don't get nothing. Like why? Yeah, I think there needs to be a lot of education, which we've kind of talked about, right? But then a lot of just like real grassroots conversation like just at a like house, a podcast like a well i mean like the part like i feel <laughs> like the party, <laughs> right, the party and the party representatives need to like be able to have like these kind of honest conversations in small groups right to really understand and hear what's going on outside of you know washington or outside of the political elite and i think i think what helps you too i think what and i'm speaking to all the listeners that's out there that's may not be as politically inclined start i would start on a city level yep. and grow to a federal national level because the city levels that's what impacts you truly on a day-to-day basis on, on the regular and it's easier to digest like if you start federally you're gonna get a headache well let me ask you this what about the intersect right what about i mean the elephant in the room right like how racist politics is you know like when are we going to confront that and kind of get over some of that you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I want y'all to talk to that. Both, you know, Tim Scott and Kamala Harris both said this is not a racist country. And I don't, I don't know how y'all feel about that statement. I didn't. I, I, I heard somebody say that, like. Yeah, they said America is not a racist country. So, that is that. What was the context when she said it? Regardless she of how said she said something it. about racist pockets or like somebody said something around racist well, pockets. Well, she, she agreed with Tim Scott. She was saying she agreed with Tim Scott in saying that. America is not a racist country. So I'm just saying, just the statement alone. 
Off of any context. Right. Like, how could you say that? Or, or is that a true statement? If it's a true statement, then I guess we go from there. But I, I think until we deal with that, we're not going to have any true politics. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have any or true. Or you're going to have black people who are just not going to be interested in engaging. Because yeah. they don't feel the conversation is really authentic. Yeah, that, and then it's going to start Hold on, let me, down. Pull, let me pull it up right here. You know what I'm saying? Is it, is it, Country. Do you agree with that? And what do you make of his warning against fighting discrimination with more discrimination? I believe that we need to adjust. Well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country, but we also do have to speak truth about the history of racism in our country and its and its existence today. And she I, I applaud right the president right for always having to be. Like, what does that mean then? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how can politicians state make statements like that? Like, what's the you know, because to the average person, it sounds like very politician talk. Okay, so America is not a racist country, but we have to deal with the history. But literally, like last week, historically, <laughs> they just killed two black people. And that, was, like, that just made it, the it news. Like, exactly. It was you know like seven shootings yeah. in the last year. You know, that just made the news. And outside of whatever they want to call black on black crime, which is, you know, results of the original sin. So, like, I don't get it. Like, how can yeah, we get I mean, that part to of To be the... frank, I don't think anyone, and this might sound a bit ageist, but I just don't think anyone probably 50 or older is going to say something the opposite of what she said. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I, like if, if you 50 or older, like... Like, uh, the whoever, the person who's going to, like... I mean, think about AOC, just as an example, mm. right? Like, she says exactly how what she feels about her particular issue she doesn't think about I mean, maybe she does to some extent but certainly not to the extent of the vice president of the united states right what will be the ramifications of my words right so if kamala had said uh, yes america is a racist country she and biden would have been vilified for days and days and days but vilified by who by the media, by, by racist people, by well, big donors, by because, white because, voters, because I feel like we're even a, by some black voters. I mean, like, it, but it's that balance, right? If you make that statement, though, now you have more of the people on your side. Because I feel like it's I'm just at least like you're at least saying something true, like historic. Because it's a way you can say it. Like she could have said, "Do you think America racist? America has a lot of room to grow." Like America, I, she, no, I feel like I she, simply said that though. No, no, she she said she agreed with Tim Scott. America is not a racist She's, country, and I feel like she did that. I'm projecting for my presidential run talk. Like I don't perhaps, want y'all to yeah. bring this back up, but yeah, in my eyes, that. you're gonna these racist people aren't gonna vote. That's my thing. They're already not gonna rock with you anyway. Period. So why are y'all always curtailing to them? Why are y'all not, not trying to get more? Because we're voters? voting regardless. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Why are y'all not coming? No, no, we're not voting regardless. That's the thing. Why not y'all coming to these people more so average people, new young voters, educating them and say, hey, y'all y'all haven't voted yet. Let me show you why you should vote versus trying to get some racists to change their mind and they're not. They're going to vote against the interest. We live in Georgia, bro. We go to Rome, Georgia all the time. We see people voting against their interests. Live action, Man. poor ass city. Uh, t- police yeah. ride around on speedsters. Where did your money go in the city? Shut- shutting down schools, but police got new cars up there, and they're voting for that because it's Rome, Georgia. Right. You know what I'm saying? She, now the sister back there, she agreeing with me. Let her talk. Let her talk. She agreeing with me because she she knows I'm speaking truth. Power. But I, but that's all I'm saying. Like we got to get over. To me, politics is always going to lose the people until we get over that part of the hump. Like even with the with the Asian bill, y'all know that was wrong. Y'all gave them protection. Like, so y'all, y'all, they tell it, me y'all it, do see it. It's a point we got, speak to it unless it's politically advantageous. And we know that racism always goes back to a black, uh, t- it's, it's, we're talking about black people, we're talking about racism. Right. We, we're not yeah. talking about anything else. Right. We're talking about but black people. But you know, and, it'll trickle down. Yeah, and, it, and yeah. it does, but it's hard to take a stance for, it's hard for people to take a stance, a clear stance for black people without being vilified, like she said. and yeah. I mean, what would be really impactful is if you have black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, uh, whoever else, all coming together and saying, we stand in solidarity with black people in this fight. 
Mm. Right. Like that would be. Oh, but instead you got black people, Asian people, everybody standing in solidarity with Asians. We stand in solidarity. Black people join every fight. That's true. We join every fight. So we've had rain, modern rainbow push coalitions for every cause. But then when it comes to standing 10 toes down for black people, folk get missing. Well, well, I heard some. It. Some. Yeah, yeah. When I say well, folks, I mean. Well, I heard, a, I heard a diversity coach talking on the radio. Pew, pew. Well, like, I heard a diversity coach talking on the radio. And she said, you know, she can go into a big boardroom and talk about women, diversity, and say, hey, we need more women in here, LGBTQ, hey, we need some more. All of that. As soon as she brings up race, it's divisive. It's like what you said. It, it becomes. Like, how did that become so evil when it's, it's like America, I mean, it's, it's like the, apple pie? it's the same reason why Republicans had a visceral reaction to the 1619 Project mm. that Nicole Hannah mm. jones wrote, okay. right. right? I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, race is, is this thing that, as a country, we cannot seem to reconcile and be honest about. And so it holds us back on so many levels. Yeah. And we just can't, we just can't see. Like why we can't do what Germany did and just like have a conversation about it, a get truth, it done like a with. truth and reconciliation, yeah, or yeah. South Africa, like have a truth and reconciliation council because they right? don't want to. The truth is is painful, yeah. right? And and sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. Because I would think if I was a racist, I would just get it done with. So y'all need to <laughs> shut up, like okay, shut up. like shut up, man. <laughs> y'all notice I got a check. God damn, like you know, that's what I would think. <laughs> I was raised, I'll be thinking like, man, just get y'all, like, tell y'all to shut up. Cause they did, they gave us Obama, and they feel like, well, we get y'all black president to shut up. Like, nah, bro, that wasn't enough. No, and if anything, I think that really exposed a lot more. Yeah, it did. It did. But now we got Biden, and you ain't black if you ain't vote for him. <laughs> Let's go to uh, locally, man. We're here in Atlanta. We're about to uh, start our politics back up. Um, can you kind of give for the again for the people that's paying attention? Like Atlanta has had a long run of black mayors. Now, like we we've been known for this legacy, um, for Baynard Jackson, all the way to Shirley Franklin being the first uh, black woman. You know, to Cassine, who's supposedly be coming back. <laughs> so we're here with uh and there's you know Bill shout Campbell. out shout out to Bill yeah. you know I rock with Bill yeah, yeah yeah uh you know there's a lot of black mayors you know what I'm saying but Atlanta has changed a way a whole lot so how do you have so many black mayors now you get into a city that's not really <laughs> before you get to that because Johnny you just don't live in Atlanta staying on the south side. Hit Norcross, like y'all might come to Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, but, like, like, and I want to politics. No, I was being Gwinnett, we talking about like Atlanta politics. Well, like, exactly. So, most people outside of Atlanta that don't live in Georgia, they are looking at social media, and your friends are in in this Atlanta proper, you know right. what I'm saying? So, like, oh, it's a whole, city. yeah, it's a whole bunch of black people out here, like, nah, your friend just came to the city that day, right? It's not like this studio is Atlanta proper. Like, did the neighborhood look pretty uh black to you? It's pretty black. <laughs> it's look. I got three. I got three black neighbors. Everybody else white. Like, I, did, I did see two white young white women walking down. Well, it's a lot. We in a okay. deer park. Stay, stay stay a little bit longer. Stay a little bit longer. <laughs> like dogs be in the front yard. Like it's it's out here. You know what I'm saying? But. You know you white when you bring your dog to the events. Bruh. That's when it changed. This is Atlanta proper now. I've never seen so many dogs in the West I dated a guy who said there's a rule in Atlanta. It's like an ordinance that nobody else knows about that white people have to have a dog. Bruh, they do. They do. (laughs) Shout out to that, brother. He know. Well, maybe not shout out. I'm I'm trying to tell you they do, man. It's like. I love dogs, though. I don't have one, but I love them. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like dogs, but I'm a I, I'm a country dog lover. <laughs> what is a country dog? Dog belong outside. Dog oh. belong outside. <laughs> Get this dog off this couch. Get God this damn. dog out this house, bro. I am a country. Look, you see my big backyard? Like, 
<laughs> hey, don't throw that away. Throw that in that bowl. Throw it in the bowl. Dog to eat. The dog I mean, gonna eat that, right? I agree. What's what's dog food? You talking about them old bowls? Man, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a country. <laughs> like, I'm a country dog lover. See, the type of dog lover that I am, you go to jail in Atlanta if you do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> dang, dang, if, I, dang. if I can you imagine my neighbors seeing a dog tied up in the back? Oh, bro, you oh, going yeah, down. No, you you going that. down, bro. <laughs> you going to be all on Channel 2, nigga. <laughs> so, look, man, Atlanta is, is different now. You know what I'm saying? People can't... It's really unaffordable. Yeah. Like... Well, it's... It, that's... De- it's an it's debatable, depending it's on... It's debatable, it. yeah. I mean, it's a debatable because we have so much land that we haven't developed, right, that can be made into affordable housing. But the housing market right now is just through the roof. And so you're not buying a house today in Atlanta at market price, right? So if the house is listed for $300,000, there's going to be a bidding war on that house. Straight up. Straight up. So, I mean, let's just talk about it, man. What's about to happen in Atlanta? We're in uh, Atlanta. We're in election season, right? right. So every city council, every, uh, the mayor, um, school board, uh commissioners and we got some labor commission i know for sure no um that's 22 22? oh okay all the the statewide seats are 22 perfect perfect so mayor city council school board what else i think there might be something on fulton county i'm not i have to double check that but mostly just city of atlanta election all right talking to uh talking to young people man that's like i'm i'm now focusing on activating new voters. There are so many new voters in Atlanta who were not here in the 2016 election. Exactly. So what should they be looking out for this race? We're going we're going to call this the uh, Saba Insight. <laughs> what should we be looking for in this in this race coming up? We can start. You can start at school board. You can go to mayor. Like, what are you looking at? Because uh, I trust her. Yeah. So I'm looking at a couple things, I guess. One is. We have, you know, we talk a big game in the city, right? And we, Atlanta's competing against so many other cities and in, in, uh, across the country, right? Right. But I think what we have not done a good job of is like taking care of home. Mm. And so it's great that we want to attract, you know, everyone from Silicon Valley to New York to Chicago, LA. That's cool. But are we maintaining, are we taking care of the people who were here? Right. right. And that is the conversation that we haven't authentically had in the city. So that's one. Okay. Um, I mean, we're starting to have a conversation around equity, like a real conversation around equity. What does that really mean? And then three, like, what's the vision, right? So the city has grown. I think we're over 500,000 residents now. So what does 2030? 500,000 residents. Yeah. Right, half a million. Right, so what is our what do we want Atlanta to look like 30, 40, 50 years? Y'all still out here single? <laughs> different podcast, different podcast. <laughs> so, so, um, do you feel like out of the mayor, uh, the mayors that are there, who do you feel like can take us to the promised land? We have Keisha, who's uh, the incumbent, right? You have Felicia Moore, um, you have what's the uh, Caucasian lady, Sharon Gay, Sharon Gay, the former attorney. And then uh, rumors of Kasim Reed. And rumors of Antonio Brown. Oh, yeah. I did see the Antonio Brown. Dang. So if you had to bet on a horse, who you going with? Don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't tell. Say, just, get, just, give, just give you a rundown of all I'll, of them. Yeah, Don't tell I'll them you're a candidate. Yeah, so, I want to save your candidate. So the, you know, the big question is who's electable, right? It's not necessarily who has the best messaging, Right, but it's who's going to actually be able to get their voters out on election day. And what what it what does it take to get your voters out? Money, right? Passion. You got to fundraise. You got to better yeah. fundraise. And you got to have a passion. Yeah, you got to have a message that folks are going to get behind. So, based off of her last four years here, how do you feel Keisha has done, and do you feel like she I, will come I back? I think it says something when an incumbent mayor has opposition. Has real opposition, mm. right? I mean, it's been a while since we've had an incumbent mayor that had real opposition that they had to fight for. Oh, that's a real statement. Cause I'll so just, I'll just think, I'm like, that's real. 
That's you know, real. So that that's the thing is is she going to be able to prevail? Um, the and, and is it what does it say about the first four years if you've had if you're coming in with you know this much opposition and rumors of a former mayor coming back? Right. So what do you feel about Felicia leaving city council president coming to the mayor piece? Um, you know, right before we started, um, I was trying to look to see if the disclosures had been put up, right? So mm. I said money, right, is like the number one thing. Mm. Um, and it might be put up in the next couple of days. So April 30th was the last day of the financial disclosure. So that for that period, how much money have they raised, right? Right. And so if you look at of everyone who has declared so far, at this moment, and again, we, the numbers haven't come out yet. Keisha is still, Mayor Bottoms is still number one as far as fundraising, right? Right. The question is, I mean, Sharon Gay, I think, will be able to raise a lot of money, right? Yeah, Sharon Gay, and for those who know, Sharon Gay is the only white candidate just running right now. Um, I feel like she's going to be able to raise a lot of money because I feel like white people in Atlanta are like black people in Wisconsin. We just want to see somebody that look like us. <laughs> With scans or whatever, so y'all know. So we just want to see somebody. That, we want to see somebody that look like us. We want to see some. We, like they like you got to realize if I'm a white kid in Atlanta, I've never but, seen a black man. A, a don't white. Don't you think black voters in Atlanta have had the same point of view? We want someone who looks like us. Yeah, and uh, we've had it. We've had it. We've you know not nigga be. But yeah, we didn't give him a chance. So that's what I'm saying. We've had it. Right. We had it. So. so so now I'm just saying, like black people are practical. They're like, well, I mean, we've had all this black leadership, and I haven't gotten nothing. Maybe this yeah, some of this. I mean, I would argue, black the same argument black people are, are making around the Democratic Party they could be making around black leadership in Atlanta. Yeah, I've said that. Yeah, I've said that. It's like Trump being in office, you know, it allows you to talk about race and get all this stuff. Let a white person be city of MA, city of Atlanta, and we can get these boys and girls clubs open back up. So I mean. Even if it a black child born in poverty in Atlanta has a four percent chance of getting out of poverty. Damn. Damn. In, in, under this, black, in, Atlanta. In, in, in Wakanda. Under black leadership. And so I think that begs the question of are our black leaders failing us? No, that's a real question. That's a real question. So all I'm saying is so maybe we need a black party in Atlanta. Ooh. Man, let me, let me call him again. <laughs> let, me call, let me call him again, man. This you, dude. You can leave that one. Look, but but I'm telling y'all, like, like I will say this, and I told you this last election. Come on, LJ, where the party at? <laughs> come on. Come, come. Dang, so dang, last dang. election, I messed up. Like I, I believed in Fort, and I rocked with him, but. I was not able to really be as, I felt like my voice would have been more influential if people didn't think, oh, well, you're getting paid to say that. Or you know what I'm saying? Or you're on his staff. Of course, you're going to say that. Bless yeah, like, but no, I'm just saying, if I was a neutral voice, oh. I'm not on a I'm not on a paid right. staff, like, it would have went a little bit farther. And that's what I'm about to be this election. Like, I'm not, if you see me work on somebody's campaign, it's because they paid me a lot of money. Like, same. They pay me. <laughs> I'm staying out. <laughs> you staying out? I'm staying out. Why? I know you don't got some offers. I'm staying out. I'm not doing it. See, we are, hey, me, me and Saba holding out. <laughs> Hold the line <laughs> to <laughs> the moon. Nah, man, because this is what I want to see. Um, because I see your boy leaving school board. Courtney. Courtney leaving school board. Go to city council president, and he Court did. It. Courtney's young. Courtney English, she's young. Frankly, uh, uh, Shirley Franklin, yeah, big and can big endorsement for him. Okay, um, he and Shirley go way back. Yeah, so that's a big. Is she still part of the Green Party when that part when Shirley Franklin was at the Green Party. Nah, she she's doing? a big Democrat. Yeah, mm. huge. So he is coming for city council president. He recently did a. Uh, yeah, in, I think it's Cynthia McKinney. Yeah. Oh yeah, he we did a she. he did a uh, interview with uh ryan at the gathering spot and he was on there talking real good you know i'm about to make a um uh, intergenerational i'm about to make a generational wealth investment to entrepreneurs because 
there was a time where Amir made investments in those millionaires. He was talking about Manny Jackson. How Manny Jackson did create millionaires. He did. Straight up. Straight so he's talking about he going to do all of this stuff. You know, so now you need to see, like, okay, well, what did Courtney do on school board? Like, it was a big thing, him getting on there. I remember he was running. And he was young. He was, like, 24 or something. He was pretty young. Mm. So what has happened? And that's what's always that's what's always the thing. Like, what have you done since you've been elected? But we do our politics like high school elections. Who's most, who's oh, who's most, most popular? popular. Who that's looks right. good? And that's, oh, that's a right. sharp brother right there. Right. And yeah. that's and that's what it is. And that's what we're trying that's what I'm trying to get away from. This election. That's why I can't work for nobody. Cause I'm gonna talk about you. And if I don't talk about you, it's cause you pay me. Damn. But no, I'm like for real. I'm or you pay me and you get edited. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, no, I like I wanna I wanna have those real conversations because we have an opportunity here in Atlanta to go one or two ways. We could lead either hold a line and make sure Atlanta's still the place where black people can thrive. Like we can switch up. We can make sure there's programs in place that we can take care of our elderly who are uh the taxes are literally kicking them out their homes because they can't take care of the property taxes we can do something with our homeless uh, population there's about by the way have you i want someone to do this story there are so many little like tents yes there's so many little like homeless pop-up communities right i was about i was like no one is talking about i was about to say i thought thought the city just gave like eight million dollars to like put them in like some apartments and uh, hotels and they did some some of that during covid oh that was covid okay Okay. so there's a lot i I was i was about to say there's about three or four or five rows on atlanta right now look like skid row yeah so the city of austin just saturday had an election and they voted to basically go back to criminalizing homelessness. So uh, you are not allowed to camp out in the city. Damn. You'll be fined. I think it's like five hundred dollars. It's like Biden trying to take the menthols. <laughs> they, 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 they cracking down everywhere. And not the new pole. Not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> kind of different, but we we feel your sentiment. <laughs> no, I mean, that's 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 no. that's crazy though. So so we're saying like in Atlanta, right? It, it's horrible. You ride up under the bridge, that bridge, right? Yeah. When you getting off of twenty, when yeah. you get on twenty from uh, yeah. you know what I'm talking about, yeah. man. This bridge like tents. Oh yeah, yeah. You talking about yeah? Right, it's straight up tent population. Well, the Cheshire it, Bridge. There's like this little cutoff area, bruh. Like, right on the side of the bridge. That was like said. It's about five pop up yeah. communities. What's yeah. that road? We was right there. It was that Claremont Road, and like they're in the woods with it. Yeah, like, I rode by and seen a dude, couple people in the woods. And you see the tents yeah. up, and then you also got the working poor people who are going to work, and when they leave, you see them leaving their jobs, going in the car, and then sleeping. Right. And you're like, hold on, you had a full uniform on. Well, and like, then you got kids. Like then, if you work in the school with kids, those kids are sleeping in the car with their mom. Like we had a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was sleeping in his yeah. car with his mom, and like, like literally having to sleep Couple with his them. girlfriend because the mom ain't got enough room for all the kids, and she got to take care of the younger kid. Like this is Atlanta, this is Atlanta, and we got a twenty three million dollar bridge. Tell him, tell him, baby girl, it's Atlanta. Come on, man! Yeah. Like, like that still gets me. It's a beautiful bridge. <laughs> twenty three fucking million dollars. Twelve, I think, or ten million, and it, yeah, that was that was a fiasco. So, all I'm saying so is, where are our priorities? What's up, baby girl? You mad too? Talk, talk to him. <laughs> so this is what I would like. I would like to create some type of forum, some type of conversation, some type of way where we could fo- hyper focus on this. Because I feel like we got an opportunity to really educate people on politics while we're in this uh, election cycle. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the, the thing is, right now, the conversation that's dominating the election is crime. Right. Right. I mean, it hasn't we haven't gone full blown yet. We haven't had candidate forums yet. Right. So we're just doing like you want to do a forum with me. We got a a whole IG page on it. Talk about it. Oh, ATL scoop. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Man, who who started like I was like, man, this this got to be the police. It got to be, bro. I thought it was a white woman. 
<laughs> yeah, it came out that it was a white one, but now I'm like, she got to be married to the police or something because, like, they were there before the police get there. They be there at the same time. Until my, they got the, there's they got no, the radar. There's <laughs> no possible way a regular person can have this many ring cameras. <laughs> like, she has every ring camera in the city. You know what I'm saying? Every she's parking just, garage. She's crowdsourced it. Everyone's probably sending it to her. Yeah. I yeah. believe now people are beginning to send stuff, but in the beginning, she had a lot. Like, she had a lot. It's like. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, if they were scary. smart, the folks who were doing the Buckhead City Hood, like, they should be, like, working, trying to work with her. If, they I, probably were, if are. I were them and I'm making crime like my big issues. I would say he'd be here. This is why we're leaving Atlanta. Yeah. Why do you think Mary, Mary Norwood didn't run for mayor? Because she's going to run. Mm. I think the Trump lawsuit hurt. It just kind of affirmed what we already knew. Right. I remember that. I remember. I, f- I forgot, but I, I forgot. What was the Trump lawsuit? Like the so when, when Trump was uh, saying that he wanted to sue because there was crime behind it. Yeah, and she signed an affidavit she, about. Oh, like, the voting. Yeah, yeah. Last, yeah, on this last election. So she pretty much, like, everybody already said she was a Republican uh, hiding as an independent. Right. Like, that's what all, anybody that's in politics always said that. And this kind of affirmed it with the Trump thing. So. Because even if you feel like you were wrong, right, and she certainly feels like she's wrong, you don't align yourself with Trump. Not when you need yeah. like Atlanta as black as it's not, you can't win without black. Yeah, yeah like, like it's some black conservatives, but yeah. like it's I mean. like in Atlanta you got to have a little everybody. Like you can have a strong white base, but you got to have a little black. That's you right. have a strong black base, but you got to have a little white. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we can't have no candidate that can't right. switch back and forth. So I'm gonna just put my little. Thing out here, I do. I do feel like Felicia is gonna be a um, surprising candidate to a lot of people. Because if Kasim really does come back, Kasim is gonna definitely split a lot of people that would go for Keisha. Like they in the same population boat. So I've lived. Yeah, but you could say Felicia and Sharon might also split the uh, white boat. That's potential too. That's potential too. So all I'm saying is I think we're going to see – I'm not going to sleep. I'm not saying I'm voting for anybody. I'm not, I'm not going to announce my vote until – Yeah, right. we, we we do need a form because, like, Felicia Moore, because y'all said it, I remember that name, T.I. was like, nah, to Felicia Moore because yeah. of the recording studios. Right. So trying to shut down on that. So I don't know if you down for that. You got a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, well, we do podcasts. She's talking about them rapper guys. <laughs> <laughs> she's not, she not talking about it. We're pretty quiet in here. <laughs> we're gonna, we gonna be good. <laughs> but but nah, man. So like that's what I want to do. I want to really like dive deep into this personal election. Like, and I want to do that with you. And I want to educate people on this seat. This is this seat. This is this seat power. This is how this seat's power affects you. Right. This is why you need this type of person. Like. I want that type of education. And, and I want it to be broken down, too, so for people that think they don't have power feel empowered. Exactly. Because, like, every time I ride through Atlanta, there's so many apartment complexes going up. I feel like there are a thousand, there's at least a thousand people, two or three thousand, got to be in the little units. Like, right. that's a whole, that that unit that's, alone that's could change. Yeah. It, could, it could flip an election. It could change, especially right. a city election. Like, people don't right. vote like that. Last, the last three mayor elections, have been one of the runoff, less right. than a thousand votes. Yep. It's a whole unit, and we can we start talking about like annexing out South Fulton, right. annexing is Emory. Yep, you know what I'm saying. Now Buckhead. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's new. That's for this year, right? Yeah, this is the first. This is the first election we don't yeah, see since South at, Fulton been gone. You know, yeah, because she worked at Emory. Interesting so. is yeah. this is the first election with Senate Bill 202. Well, what's that? Right. So the the. The controversial voting rights bill. The Jim Crow. Bill that Jim just, Crow 2. 2.0. Oh, so y'all you know can't get what? no water. No, Jim Evil. Oh, Jim, Jim Evil. Jim Crow Esquire. <laughs> exactly. <what> James <laughs> Crow <laughs> Esquire. Like, what is Jim Eagle? Do? <laughs> Jim Eagle. So like corn that. pop. But so yeah, no, exactly. so no waters. Right. No. I um, mean, like, less, you less have boxes. To vote. Yeah, there's there's some provisions around making sure you vote at your precinct, and if you don't vote at your precinct, your vote is not counted. 
So there's that's but I thought on a federal level that was no, it's it's it will start with this yeah. election. That's that's wild. But it's yeah. the first time. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that's gonna be interesting. I want to break that down. I want to I want to interview candidates. And we have to also look at school board. Like we we spend so much time Let's talk about it. on council and mayor, particularly mayor, mm-hmm. but school board. I mean, right? Like let's let's address why there's so much of an inequity between black students and their reading levels and their math levels and white students in this city. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that yeah. is a problem. Yeah. Right. That's, and it's a huge problem. We we talked to some teachers on this podcast before that talks about just not getting those resources even for the virtual learning. Yeah, you know? some of these schools in APS look like colleges. And then some of these schools in APS got mold. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we haven't that's why I was like with Courtney and you know I know this going out, and I know people. I know Courtney. He know me. Well, you can reach out. You yeah, like down. reach let's out. Let's have let's have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like because it's a lot of stuff that I just feel like it's a lot of work that hasn't been done on school board. Yeah. So for you to come to city council president, what's the difference? You know, and I feel like Atlanta is about to be eclipsed by some of these other progressive black cities that's trying to get it right, like Jackson or even up in North Carolina, like there. There are some progressive black cities that's like about to get it right, and for Atlanta to have all Birmingham. this black leader, Bur- all yes, especially Birmingham, like they're rolling things back. They're letting, you know, so for us to be, he he just eliminated like fifteen thousand people from their marijuana charges. Yeah, I've seen that. Like, I've seen that. What what are we doing in Atlanta? You know, are we trying you know, to close the prison? Because, because you know, you. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. Yes, man. Well, you know, Young Thug just got thirty uh, uh thirty prisoners out of. Uh, he, he did not get thirty. Damn, damn, damn. How you know that? I got sources. Damn, damn. I ain't gonna lie, but I saw the news clip. It only looked about like six people outside. So I, was, I don't know what other 30 at, but I'm gonna give it to Thugger, but never mind. But you know what I keep remembering? Damn. <laughs> Every time you talk about Atlanta politics, all I remember is that conversation you had with that one person. I won't say his name, but he was talking about, well, do you want Atlanta to have a white mayor so you know you can lose so some of these black companies lose contracts and this and that so basically he was talking about that black elite in Atlanta yeah, I mean, and I feel like Atlanta, that's the black elite in Atlanta are well taken care of I feel like they're the ones that's keeping we'll talk about it later yeah. <laughs> we're talking about, he we're talking about he's talking about uh, the we're person talking. we were talking about free pot <laughs> so the one who led to the mayor right <laughs> 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 We're talking about so look, I had to leave him on clip. Like, I'm excited. I'm excited because again, I feel like there is no real platform that's educating the people, specifically young people. I want to create something that allows um people to come to weekly to get boom, boom. Facts of what's really happening out here, what's really going on. So if you definitely some this is something that uh we can lean on you for, we would like to call you in. We'd like to call you in. So, uh, with that being said, before we end this out, man, what do you have like just to say to people about why they should get involved with politics? Just speak to the people on that. Why should we civically get involved? Because your life depends on it. Honestly. Like in every way you can think of. It depends on it as far as what your education is going to look like in public school. It depends on it as it relates to if your trash is being picked up in a timely manner. If the air quality in your neighborhood is okay and you don't have freaking asthma, right? I mean, and we can talk about the impact of asthma during COVID. Talk about Right? So that's just like a prime example right there of the impact. Yeah. The uh, types of jobs that are available to you. Right, I mean, like every aspect of your life. Fifteen, vote for fifteen, all of that. Yeah, all of that. So look, to the people that's listening, right now, you got a choice to make, man. You can continue to complain and watch it happen to you because it's gonna affect you regardless. These laws are gonna pass. Like one thing that pissed me off with this new controversial bill is people making so much noise after it was pushed. Exactly. Versus doing something before, like, stop being so reactionary. You know what I mean? Me, for one, like, I'm in the schools too much. Like, I need to do a better job paying attention to school board. I need to pay, uh, do a better job of paying attention to city council members. 
even the ones I don't know. I need to do a better job at paying attention to what's happening. And, and, and I consider myself a pretty engaged person, but I could go harder. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to make it work for people. We want people to check in. We want you to go ahead and make sure you register to vote. If you're in Atlanta, I promise you. Uh, it takes like two minutes maybe to register to vote. So with that being said, go to empoweredapp.com. You checked out Empowered yet? Yeah, spell it for folks. So Empowered is E-M-P-O-W-R-D. <laughs> Don't do the E on the end. Don't do the uh, E-D on the end. It's just a D. So it's Empowered without the E. Go to empowerapp.com. This app is the number one app, I feel, to help you find. It's, it's going to be a link at the bottom in the description. Empowerapp.com. You can download it on iOS and Android. It's game changing. It lets you know when your next, if you put in your name, your address, it actually pulls up your local voting precinct. It lets you know when your next election is coming up. Tell you where to vote, when to vote. It lets you uh, check and see if you are. Uh, it lets you uh, see if you are actually uh, um, registered. Yeah. So you can now register to vote on the app. So check out Empower App. We want y'all to get checked in on that. We want y'all to get plugged in. And we're gonna be back with y'all. So we say this every week. We love y'all. We need y'all. But most importantly, we can't wait to see y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Get Over Podcast. <laughs>